The topic now is breastfeeding, so all about boobies. Um, our hospital is BFHI accredited, which is Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative. So every three years we've got to jump through hoops, prove that we're promoting breastfeeding as the best way to feed your baby. And when we get the accreditation, then we get funding for lactation consultants. There are booby nurses. And anything to do with feeding, breastfeeding baby, they're the ladies you talk to. So they do ward rounds if you're up on the ward and they also do drop-in clinics five days a week. So Monday, Tuesday and Thursday that are there at Tapu Waiora on Commerce Street and from 10 till 2, that's a drop-in service. On Wednesdays, the same times but at Dargaville Maternity Unit and on Fridays, they're up at Kawakawa Maternity Unit. Same times, 10 till 2 and it is a free service anything to do with breastfeeding, if you're um, weaning baby off the breast, they're the ladies you want to talk to and it's totally free. So uh, the World Health Organization recommends that you exclusively breastfeed your baby for six months. So that's no water, no formula, no um, solid foods. And then there's at six months you can start to introduce um, foods to them but there's breastfeeding benefits up until they're two years old. So totally up to you how long you want to breastfeed for, you'll be supported, but it is so much easier than having to get up and make bottles in the middle of the night if you don't have to. And so much better for your baby's immunity, um, especially um, at the moment with the different little things we've had going around like measles and other viruses. A really important thing to think about doing at the moment is breastfeeding your babies. We know that there is massive benefit to their gut, to their immune system, to um, avoiding eczema, asthma, they have less hospital admissions if they're breastfed. And there is massive, massive um, advantages to breastfeeding. Um, I don't know if people have started looking at how much formula costs, but breastfeeding is so much cheaper. It is entirely free and it's the perfect perfect formula for your baby when you feed them from your breasts. And we know too from research that our breasts are amazing, they make everything that our babies need. Um, and with this BFHI, this accreditation that we have up here in Whangarei Hospital, our breastfeeding rates are the highest in the country. So our Northland women do breastfeeding really well um, and a lot of that is due to our lactation consultant team. They're an amazing um, bunch of women and they are really informed. They're also really good at relating to new mums and mums that are breastfeeding. So please um, come and see them um, if you're able to. And we know that breastfeeding can be hard for some mums. Some are really lucky, they put baby on, they feed no issues. But for maybe half of our mums, they have issues at some point during their, their breastfeeding journey. So that's why we had the lactation consultants to help you through those times. The other thing that, we've, um, that we work by being a BFHI accredited hospital is 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. You will see these posters around the hospital. You'll see them here in our community building. Um, you might see them with your midwife when you're seeing her. Um, and they give us really clear guidelines to helping people and promoting and supporting breastfeeding. They're not only in English, they're in other languages as well. But the, really the main things of the 10 steps is really promoting the skin to skin, um, and the uh, early initiation of breastfeeding. So as soon as that baby's on your chest, as soon as they start showing us signs that they want to feed, your midwife will help you get that baby on for that first breastfeed. Um, and that we do what we call rooming in. So your baby stays with you 24 hours in the hospital. Um, you might have seen again in American movies or some movies they, you show, they show you nurseries where the babies are lined up in their beds away from their mums. That doesn't happen in Whangarei Hospital. Your baby stays with you um, right beside your bed in their own little safe sleep space. I'm going to go over some anatomy with you so you've got an understanding of how your breasts work. So the inside of your breast looks a little something like that. So back here is where the milk is made and stored and then you've got ducts coming down to your nipple. So there are about 10 to 15 holes in the end of your nipple, not just one. And if you've got a piercing, then there's a couple more holes for the milk to come flying out of. 
Orangia areola, it's all bumpy, and that's Montgomery glands, and they produce like a natural moisturiser, lubricant, keeping it all ready for breastfeeding, so you don't need to do anything to your nipples to toughen them up. Some people get told to go out in the sun and <laughs> toughen them up or to scrub them with brushes. You do not need to do anything. The baby will toughen them up. Um, you may have noticed your nipple and areolas got darker during pregnancy, and that's because babies can differentiate light and dark. So for them, they can smell the milk, and that is like a big neon sign saying lunch. And they're going to open their mouth, and they're going to come in, and you're going to get them on there quick. If you go slowly, they're going to grab your nipple, and they're going to flick it with their tongue, and it's going to hurt. Because that's just nipple feeding, it's not actually milking the breast. So what you need is the nipple to go right to the back of their mouth and get as much of the areola in their mouth as possible as well. So if you've got small areolas, they'll probably get the whole thing in. If they're larger, not the whole thing, but just so that you're making sure that nipple gets right to the back of their mouth. And then they'll get on and they'll start to suck. A couple of quick sucks to trigger the letdown reflex, which sends a message to the brain, baby's on, needs feeding, sends a message to let the milk flow. Now, when the milk's flowing, some women feel it and some don't. If you do, you might just feel like a tingly feeling in your breasts, and that's perfectly fine. So you'll notice baby gets into a nice sucking and swallowing rhythm, and you can hear them glugging the milk back. And you'll know they've got a good attachment because you've got that going on. There's no clicking. Their lips are out like snapper lips, and they've got a really good suction on there. And you'll notice that. So it doesn't matter what size your breasts are, you're going to make the milk for your baby and it doesn't matter what your nipples are like, they're going to work with them. The only thing is if you've got inverted nipples where it points inwards, talk to your midwife or talk to the LCs beforehand because there's things they can do to help it pop out a little bit. Because on day three when your milk comes in, it's like trying to get them onto a bowling ball. So if there's a little bit of something to grab hold of, it makes life easier. So that's that. Now, let's talk about the size of baby's tummy and your milk. So when baby first comes out and they have that first feed and it can take an hour and you're like, whoa, they're getting heaps. Their tummy is that size. They're getting about five mils of milk. But that is colostrum. It is liquid gold. And it's like they're trying to suck and condense milk through little pinholes. It's thick and creamy and full of everything they need. That feed will line their gut and set them up for life. And then that was such hard work that they'll fall asleep. You're like, I've got the best baby ever. They're wonderful, love them. You're on this hormone high, so you can't sleep. And then on day two, you start to come down off that high and baby will wake up. They get the day two munchies and they're gonna feed and feed and feed. This is when they toughen your nipples up. So on day three, when your milk comes in, their tummy has stretched to that. So you can see why on day two they were feeding so much to tell your boobs to make that much more milk for them. And when your milk comes in, it changes from that thick, creamy stuff to then at the start of the feed, it's like green top milk. It's thirst quenching. As the feed goes on, it's more like blue top milk. So it's like it filling them up. So they have a drink and then they have a meal. And then they're going to feed every two to three hours, mostly at night, in those early weeks, because as you already know, they're nocturnal. You want to sleep, they wake up. So in those early weeks, they haven't quite sussed the difference. And they're feeding all the time to get your body to make more and more milk for them. That's day three, that's day 10. So as they get bigger, they get quicker at feeding, and they're gonna start to go longer between feeds. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, I promise it will get easier. But in those early weeks, it's all just a blur because you always seem to be feeding or changing the baby and that's just your whole life, really. Okay, so that's those. Now, you do need to make sure you're drinking lots of water because you'll be really thirsty. Every time you put baby on for a feed, it's like, thirsty so make sure you've got your drink bottle handy and make sure you're eating good food so really nutritious stuff um, you know eggs on toast and 
cheese and ham sandwiches and protein shakes and all that sort of thing. So if you don't have time to make proper food while everyone's out during the day, have something that's nutritious but quick and easy. And then about three, four o'clock in the afternoon before the, the babies go into the, the witching hours, um, have something then as well to help boost you up ready for the evening when they're constantly on you. And it's really handy if um, you know your visitors can come and they can do jobs to help out, like prepare dinner so all you've got to do is switch the oven on or hang out the washing for you or something like that while you're feeding. And then when you've finished, hand baby over and be like, right, I'm going to go have a shower or do something for yourself so you can have a break. Food-wise, you can now eat everything you want. So there's no restrictions, just in moderation. So if it's particular fruit season, like fijas or strawberries, and you go crazy eating heaps, it's going to upset your tummy. It's going to do the same to baby. So everything in moderation. And yes, chocolate is allowed. <laughs> if someone says you're not allowed chocolate, yeah, you don't want to be friends with them. <laughs> so a little bit of chocolate for your sanity is good. But just good nutritious food and everything in moderation. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so the next little bit that I'm going to do with you is things that you need to think about to set yourself up for breastfeeding. Um, for the uh, first initial feed, your midwife will be around and when she is seeing your baby getting hungry, she'll be pointing out the little cues that your baby's giving you to let you know that they're hungry. Um, and then she'll be helping you with your technique around holding the baby and just all the things that you need to look out for to know the baby's mouth is open wide and um, when they're latched on, all the things that they're doing to show you that they're latched on well and that they're sucking and swallowing. Um, and so really just listen to your midwife, take on board what she's saying every time she's doing a feed with you. We really recommend that first time mums stay in hospital until they are confident with breastfeeding. Um, when you can get your baby on yourself and you're like, yep, no, I can do this on my own, maybe then think about going home. Because it's really hard to go home and then be struggling with feeding and not have the ability to just phone somebody or push a buzzer like you do in hospital and get someone to come and give you a hand. Um, and the staff in the hospital are amazing at helping new mums with breastfeeding. So I'm just going to go through, so in the hospital they will set you up and they'll tell you everything you need to think about, but I'm just going to go through things you need to think about for at home. So I'm going to use Natasha today and um, with your chairs at home, I really recommend that you use something like a couch, so something that you can sit in the middle of, uh, so you've got lots of pillows around you, you've got a coffee table that you can put a drink bottle on, you need a huge drink bottle. You are going to be so thirsty when you're breastfeeding um, and so make sure you've got a big drink bottle. Um, you are going to get a, the breastfeeding booklet um, that we showed you earlier in the video and I ha recommend having that beside you so you can just flick through it. There's lots of really cool photos in there, lots of really good information to just remind you uh, how to do it and if you're doing it properly or not. And if it's getting sore, if you're uncomfortable, it gives you really good ideas of things you can change and also all the phone numbers for the lactation clinics um, and really good information to other support groups. Um, so when you're sitting on your chair at home, you want to make sure that you've got a flat lap to work on. So you're sitting down, feet flat on the floor in front of you, but that you're comfortable, that you're able to sit back and relax in the chair. Um, you really need lots of pillows. And so my favourite is the tri-pillow, but there are breastfeeding pillows that you can buy, or maybe a friend that's had a baby might give you their breastfeeding pillow. Those are really handy too. They're more of a U-shape and they sit close into your body. Um, but the tri-pillow from Kmart, Spotlight, anywhere like that, just get lots and lots of covers because um, babies, they spew on them. You can get poo on them from the baby. Um, they make a bit of a mess on these pillows. They so get lots and lots of covers. So when you're sitting down, you want to be sitting comfortably and then you want to have the pillow tucked in close around your body. If you're really tall, you probably need another pillow underneath there because when you're holding your baby to breastfeed, the reason that you've got the pillows is that when you're holding the baby up by your breast height, um, you're supporting their body weight and you want to be able to rest your arm down on the pillow. Okay, so have the pillows at the right height, but also because you're going to be sitting here with a new baby, potentially for kind of half an hour to an hour sitting breastfeeding. So you don't want to be holding their weight that whole time with your arms. So resting down on the pillow is really important. So pillows, 
um, and all the other bits and pieces, the TV remote, your phone, that kind of thing to keep you entertained while you're sitting here for this time breastfeeding. Um, so pillows are important and the other important thing that you need to think about is um, bras, so maternity bras. And so we've got a, a cheap and cheerful one here that a few years ago was about $10 um, from farmers. And so with the maternity bras, you need to be able to look at them and know their maternity because they've got these nifty little clips that open to allow your breast to come out so you can feed your baby. Um, we recommend that you get fitted for maternity bras up to about 38 weeks. Um, your breasts usually finish changing in your pregnancy by about 38 weeks, so you would have noticed quite early on in your pregnancy with the hormones changing that your breasts get bigger, they're way more sensitive, they get quite veiny. Natasha's talked about how your areola gets darker, um, you, you feel like your nipples get a bit bigger, so lots and lots of changes going on. By 38 weeks, we expect those changes to kind of slow down or stop. So you fit yourself at 38 weeks for a maternity bra that's nice and soft, it's got no underwire, um, it is comfortable, it's not cutting into you anywhere. There are lots of different places around Whangarei, like Bend On, Kmart, um, there's different companies like um, Caden Shea that you can order online um, and we really recommend that you go and get fitted properly. And get a number of these because you will be wearing these day and night. So at night time when you're up feeding, um, even when you're asleep you'll have these on because you'll be trying to hold on breast pads and stuff like that with your bra. So this one looks like it's going to fit Natasha just right. We'll get this on her. <coughs> All right, and just for today, for the teaching purposes, we are going to add a couple of boobs in here for Natasha, so I can show you some teaching around breastfeeding and a second boob. All right, so she's got the equipment, she's got the breasts, she's got um, the bra that's doing with all the right clips and things so we can feed. So the next thing we need is a baby. And so often people wonder how they know that the baby's going to be hungry and people's first idea is that you're going to know that they're going to be hungry when they start to cry. And actually by the time you've left a baby until they're crying you've missed a whole lot of cues before that. So babies do a few different things. This is called Chucky, this doll, because we think he's a bit scary looking. Um, but babies do, they stick their tongues out, they look like a cat, like they're going to lap up some milk and they start to look like they're looking for something. And if you touch their face, when they're doing that, they'll turn and open their mouth. If you touch the other side, they'll turn and open their mouth for you. So they've got these little triggers. Um, also, they start putting their little fist in their mouth, so they start sucking on their fists, or if a blanket or a clothing is up there, they'll start sucking on whatever's around their mouth. So if they're doing those signs, um, it's much better to catch them before they're crying, because when they're crying, you've got to kind of calm them down before you get them on the breast. Okay, so this doll is um, a little teaching doll to show you what they do with their tongue. So I'll show you what Chucky does. So he <laughs> is meant to show you with his tongue what he does to let you know that he's hungry. Do you feel like feeding him? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll pop him away and get a much less scary baby. All right, so um, when you see all those feeding cues like the sucking and the tongue coming out, you're going to go get yourself set up, comfortable, get your pillow organised and then your drink bottle and all those other bits. And then this is where these bras are really handy because you can see how Natasha's opened it up, got her boob out, it's all ready to go. So I'm going to show you how to hold the baby. And so the best way to hold a baby is exactly how Natasha's holding the baby now, where you've got thumb at the top, fingers supporting the head. Um, babies, they don't like it when you put the, your hand over the back of their head. They don't like that sensation. And also when you've got your hand like this, you're actually pushing their face into your breast and they can't breathe properly. So with your thumb and finger like that, you can look down at their nose and if you feel like their nose is pushing into your breast, you can just tilt their little face away from your breast so they've got a gap between their nose and your boob. So you're holding the baby like this, the other hand is supporting your breast. So we say to hold your hand in a C shape, so you're supporting your breast because when you've got milk in your breast, your boobs are quite full and heavy, so you're supporting your breast with this hand, holding the baby with this hand. 
So when the baby is in this position, they'll be helping you to get on the breast because they'll be starting to do this and a ah, big wide open mouth. So your next little bit is to try and get them as much of your breast as possible into their mouth. So when you're doing that big wide open mouth, you actually start with their nose opposite your nipple because babies when they go to feed they actually look up and open their mouth so if you've got their nose opposite the nipple they look up and then you jam as much of your boob into their gob as you can um, you use your other hand that's supporting your breast to kind of shape your nipple and then another little technique that you can do is get your nipple and run it down from their nose across their lips down to their chin and when you're doing that it's doing that with the baby and with your nipple you're trying to get it in and into their mouth when you get that little technique sorted you know you're getting lots into their mouth so when they go on they're going to start doing short sharp little sucks um, they might in the early days of breastfeeding be uncomfortable and we kind of expect some kind of um, it's not totally comfortable when they're starting to feed. Um, when they do those short, sharp little sucks, that starts your letdown happening. So you've got all these hormones that trigger in your brain down to your breasts to let your milk start flowing. Some people feel that letdown, some people don't. But when your letdown does happen, your baby will change from those little short, sharp sucks to actually gulping and swallowing. And they're much longer um, sucks and swallows and you can actually hear it. And the little bits that your baby does, like their ears wiggle and their jaw moves in a way that you'll start to recognize that they're on properly and they're sucking well. Initially, it can be sore when they first go on. And usually we get you to just wait, to just usually count to 10 slowly in your head. And if it is easing after 10 seconds, then they're probably on right and keep them on. But if that pain is increasing and increasing and it's getting too sore and it's unbearable to leave the baby on, we really recommend that you take the baby off because they will not be on right. If it's painful, if it's sore, they are not on well. With a baby that's sucking on your breast, the best way to let, make them let go, so don't just pull them because they will pull your nipple with them, is you actually have to break their suction by putting your finger in the corner of their mouth and you break their suction and slide them off. Okay, And then you set yourself up again. So hold one hand around your breast, other hand behind the baby, wait for that big wide open mouth and then try and jam more of your breast into their gob. <laughs> um, you really need to be aware of not going down to the baby. So often people have the baby lying on the pillow and they lean down to the baby. Don't do that. Sit back in the chair, hold behind the baby, bring them up onto you. Um, when they're on well and you can hear that sucking and swallowing, babies are quite rhythmic. They'll do a suck and a swallow, they'll stop. And they have a bit of a rest and then they'll suck and swallow and stop and rest. And so just let them keep doing that um, until they slowly finish that feed. If they're falling asleep, you do need to wake them up and get them going again. But if they're still doing that good sucking and swallowing, we just let them feed until they are finished. So we do not time feeds. You just wait for your baby to let you know that they're finished by coming off. So eventually a baby will let go of your nipple and they'll slide off easily. When they slide off, um, you can pop them up, sit them up on the pillow in front of you. And when they are full, they look milk drunk. They look really content. They usually have milk dribbling out both sides of their mouth, down into their chins. They look quite relaxed, so they sort of flop on the pillow. Uh, they, their eyes can roll back in their heads and you just look at them and you know that they've had a good feed. Um, so when you're sitting them up, you're supporting their chin with your hand, exactly like this. So keeping them upright, the other hand on their back and you're tapping on their back so that if they have got some wind, they can burp. Um, if this doesn't work and they really start squirming and squiggling and you think they look uncomfortable, what you can do is hook little finger and thumb underneath their armpit, other hand behind their back, and you're actually lifting them right up off the pillow so that their little legs are dangling. Um, so just hold them up and then pop them back down on the pillow, tap their back a bit again, and then lift them back up again. And that's a really good trick to help a baby bring up its wind. Babies need to be quite straight and upright to be able to bring those air bubbles up. Another way you can do burping is up over your shoulder. So you can pop them over your shoulder. Just make sure their head is turned one way or the other. Give their back a bit of a tap and hopefully they'll do a burp. 
If they have had a really good feed on this side, that breast will feel quite different. It'll feel lighter, it'll feel like emptier, it won't feel so tight. Um, you would have heard all that good sucking and swallowing and know that that milk is transferred into the baby. When they come off looking content, you think, yay, okay, they've had a good feed. Um, you don't need to time the feed, but you want them to have a really good feed off that first breast and make sure it's emptied well. If they come off and they burp and then they start to do this again, like they're looking for more food, you might need to pop them onto the other side. So you flick that second breast out. This one's a bit different looking, this one doesn't have quite such a good nipple on it, it's a bit smaller, but we absolutely know that women's breasts are different. So one will be bigger than the other, um, one side will probably make more milk than the other and the baby will prefer one side. Um, but you need to keep swapping the baby over from breast to breast because if you just feed the baby more on one side, that one side will make more milk um, and the other side will not. So keep swapping them over. Okay, so for the second feed, um, Natasha's going to put that hand around her breast. Oh, sorry. Support her boob. Pretend. That's it. And then thumb and finger behind the baby's head. Wait for that baby to be doing that ah, big wide open mouth and she's going to bring the baby up and then jam as much of her boob into that baby's gob as she can. <laughs> Again, you're counting to 10. If it's sore, if it's easing, then leave them on. If it's not, take them off, reposition them again. On this side, they're doing a suck and swallow for as long as they want to. Um, and so a little hold that Natasha's just swapped to now is something that you, you will get to as you get more confident with breastfeeding. Initially you do need to stay to that same hold where this hand is around the breast and that hand is behind the baby. So you don't have hands free initially. But once you and the baby are really good, you're getting more confident with breastfeeding, you can absolutely go to this hold where the baby's head is in the crook of your elbow and then you have got a hand free for the remote and the phone and stuff. Okay, so if the baby goes on this side and has a feed and then when they come off they've had enough and they are fast asleep and you get to put them down in their bed for a little while, um, the next time the baby wakes up to feed, which may only be an hour or two, and the baby will need another big long feed again. So feeding in the early weeks is constant. So day and night you are going to be trapped to your couch or wherever you end up breastfeeding um, and it's going to be feel like it's never ever going to end, but it, it will. Okay, so if next time Natasha goes to feed, when the baby wakes up and is showing those same signs again of hunger, the next time she's going to start breastfeeding on this side. Okay, so this first feed that we've done together, this side's been main meal and this side has been dessert. The next time the baby feeds, you want this side to be main meal and this side to be dessert. And it is really tricky to remember which side you feed on last. So I really recommend that if you wear something like a bangle or a ring or you've got a hair tie in your hair, that you just swap it over on your wrists. So that you, so for the next time Natasha's going to feed on this side, she'd have the hairband on this wrist. So she just looks down and goes, yep, it's on that side, start feeding on that side. In the blur of breastfeeding, you absolutely forget which side you need to feed on next. Okay, so main meal and then dessert for the next feed. Okay, so I've showed you one positioning hold where you hold the baby across your chest and get them on your breast for a feed. Um, you don't need to hold the baby like this every single feed. There are other ways of positioning the baby. So another really common one is to hold the baby underneath your arm. So you're still going for the same thing, so tummy to mummy. So their tummy against mummy and nose opposite the nipples or nose to hose we call that. So nose opposite the nipple, wait for that big wide open mouth. You're still using this hand to hold your breast and position it and then pop the baby on with that big wide open mouth. Try and get as much of your breast as possible into their mouth. So this can be a really good hold for mums that have had caesareans or they're uncomfortable or if you're just trying to that might be getting sore on your nipple, the, the first way that we showed you. So this way can be a different way to feed. And there's uh, issues you can have around breastfeeding and one of those is leaky boobs. Some women are really lucky, they put baby on, the milk flows, take baby off and it stops, but for others you can hear someone else's baby cry and there is milk everywhere. So what you need is breast pads.
Now, depending on how heavy your leak situation is, depends on what you need. Um, wool ones, you get different sizes for different size breasts. These are not the greatest absorbency, but they have got the lanolin in, so they're soothing on your nipples. And uh, there's cotton reusable ones as well. So if you got them a bit thicker, they'd be more absorbent. Um, if you're going for disposables, then we've got the paper-based ones here. Um, they, if these stick to your nipples, whatever you do, don't pull them off because they'll take skin with them. You need to soak them off. But these are mm, sort of absorbent, but not if you've got a real heavy leak situation going on. And they have a, one little sticky tab to try and hold it in place in your bra. So hopefully you don't have any of those moments where it just kind of makes its way out and then falls on the ground and you just kind of walk away. It's not mine. Um, for the heavy leakers, then these ones have um, the jelly crystals in, like the nappies. So these are the more absorbent ones. And they have double sticky tabs to hold them in place. I won't mention brands, but you can get the disposables from the supermarket and you can actually get some of the reusable ones from the supermarket now as well. So if you want to know brands, just ask your midwife or give us a text and say, hey, what were those really absorbent ones you mentioned? Because um, we don't endorse them, we can just let you know what other people have said to us. Um, if you can, get some of the hydrogel discs. They're a little bit expensive and they're not absorbent, but they are gel and you can keep them in the fridge for that day two, three, when your nipples are getting toughened up and they are soothing. So you can keep them in the fridge, pop them in, the bra, in your bra and they'll be nice and soothing on your, your poor sore boobies and nipples and um, when you're really engorged and nipples are toughening up. If you find that you're a super heavy leaker, um, like first thing in the morning, the breast pads just aren't cutting it. Baby's on one side, feeding, the other side's pouring out. Only if that happens to you. Um, you can buy breast shells. Now this goes over the nipple while you are feeding. And then as soon as the feed's finished, get rid of them. They cause a lot of pressure. So it just collects the drip milk. Okay, they have a little spout on the top. Make sure that is at the top in your sleep deprived state. I've put them in with it accidentally on the side before and had milk everywhere. And I've also not kept an eye on it and it's overflowed. So just see how you go, but don't buy these sorts of things if you don't need them because it's money that you don't need to be spending. Um, another thing some women use are these which are advertised as a pump, but they actually um, are not that great. And the lactation consultants have found that there's a lot of women getting mastitis with these because with your standard hand and electric and battery pumps, it's like the baby, it sucks, it releases. With these, that's a lot of suction and it's not releasing. And that's on your delicate breast tissue um, and it can cause all sorts of issues, like I say. So if you're using these, please try to only use them as like a milk collection thing or release the suction every so often so that you're giving your breasts a break. Okay. But yeah, there's lots of pumps out there if you're wanting to express milk. So see what you need if you need anything at all. And you can hire them if you just need it for a one-off like you've got mastitis or something and you need to clear it, then talk to the lactation consultants and they um, sometimes lend them out if they've got them in. But um, should I just keep going? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you were expressing, maybe you had a special occasion coming up that you wanted to have a few drinks, so baby needs to have some pre-expressed milk, then you can get the pumps to do that. If you're going back to work, you might need a pump for that as well so you can carry on feeding. And when you're expressing, your nipple gets sucked down the tube and it looks uncomfortable, but it's not. It just looks it. And then you don't spend a whole heap of money on specially designed milk storage bags. It's a waste of money. Just get some Ziploc bags from the supermarket, 
you can see how much milk you've expressed, pour it in the bag and you can pop it in the freezer. And in your blue book that you get given, the breastfeeding Bible, um, it says how long you can store the milk in different ways. Okay, and when you're taking milk out, get the stuff closest to today's date because that's the closest recipe to what baby needs right now. Now, if it's like summer now, your milk is a salad for baby. If you froze something back in the winter, it was a roast dinner, so it's not quite the same and they might not drink the whole amount and vice versa. You know, you're trying to feed them a, a salad, but they actually need a roast dinner. So they might need more. So what's closest to today's date is the best option. So you get the bag out of the freezer, pop it in a bowl of warm water, it defrosts really quickly, pour it into your bottle and then put the bottle into a bowl of hot water. A couple of minutes, swirl to mix, check the temperature on the inside of your wrist. Please do not heat breast milk in a microwave, it kills off everything that's good in it. And also don't shake it this way because it breaks up the protein so you swirl to mix. If it's a bit chilly, pop it back in the water for a little bit longer and check again. So it should be body temperature. So when you drip it, you might feel it land but it won't feel hot or cold either way and that's the right temperature. The same if you're using formula, check it on your wrist for baby. So another really common problem of breastfeeding and something that you may have heard about from other mums is mastitis. Okay, so mastitis is a quite a common problem and something you do need to look out for. When you look back inside um, the breast again, there is all these um, storage pots around the outside and all that milk flows down these ducts. And if a duct gets blocked or um, if your breast gets tight because it's full of milk and it doesn't empty properly, you can have a blockage of milk in one of these ducts and it starts to get inflamed and, rest and red inside your breast, um, you would start to feel pain on the outside of your nipple with a blocked duct. And usually when you've got that pain, you start to sort of rub at your breast a bit where it's sore. Um, if you took your bra off and had a look at your breast, you would notice like a red area around that blocked duct. It would start to feel a bit hot. Um, you might feel a bit of a lump inside there as you're rubbing at it. Um, if you're feeling um, well and you're okay, it's just a bit sore, you, what we really recommend is that you get the baby on that breast. So make sure they feed well, um, get them well latched on there. And if you can, get your thumb in behind that lump and just do some gentle massaging forwards. Doesn't need to be hard. Um, you need to make sure it's not damaging your breast as you're doing that rubbing forwards. And hopefully that baby will empty that block duct for you. So you just really need to pay attention for the next few feeds and make sure the baby empties that breast and that part of your breast really, really well. If um, you don't manage to clear that blocked duct, it can really quickly become an infection that we call mastitis. And so mastitis is where you'd get a really hot, hard wedge of your breast around that blocked duct um, and you would start to feel unwell. So you would feel hot, and cold, shivery and shaky, you'd start to feel achy, um, you start to feel like you're actually getting the flu or a really bad cold. Um, and if you notice that you're feeling unwell, again, take your bra off and have a look at your breasts. Um, have a feel, you'd feel lumpy and like I say, hot and hard. If that's happening, again, you want to try and get the baby on that breast more. If your baby is asleep and you can't get them to feed, we really recommend that you take some Panadol and some Nurofen, hop in the shower, because the shower can just relax you a bit and it's nice, the warmth of the shower. Get your fingers in behind that um, hard area and try and massage it forwards if you can and try and express off some of the milk from in that um, area of your breast. Um, if that's not working and you're starting to feel really unwell, you do need to call your midwife. So if you're still in that first six weeks after the baby's born and your midwife is still caring for you, you need to phone her. And when you tell her what's happening, she'll organise some antibiotics for you. So mastitis needs antibiotics to clear it up. And they'll make sure that you get the antibiotics that are fine for continuing with breastfeeding. If you're not still with your midwife, go and see your GP and they will sort you out for mastitis. Um, if you don't sort out mastitis, it can really quickly become something called a breast abscess. And that is a, a painful, you need to be hospitalised and you don't want to go there. So make sure any block ducts that you try really hard to get onto those and mastitis. If you feel like you're getting really unwell, phone your midwife or your GP. 
and get that baby more on that side feeding. Um, another really common problem with breastfeeding, and you would have heard me talking now about it being a bit sore when the baby's feeding. So when the baby initially goes on your nipple, um, with all the sucking that a baby is, is doing with feeding, your nipples can get quite sore, they can get damaged, and sometimes just one feed where the baby isn't on correctly, and you can have a crack in your nipple that may bleed. It takes a long time to heal an, a cracked nipple. So if you're getting to the point where you can't actually put the baby onto your breast because it's hurting and it's damaged, then a midwife or a lactation consultant may give you one of these. So this is not something that you buy beforehand. It's nothing that you prepare yourself and put in your baby bag for after the baby's born. If you need it, um, you will get organised with one of these so that you get taught how to use it properly because it can affect your supply um, and it can affect your length of breastfeeding. So make sure that you're getting really good education around how to use these. This is called a nipple shield. And so depending where the, breast, the baby's feeding, it actually sits over your nipple and then the baby goes on this way. So they've got this little gap here for their nose. It's got little holes in the end of the shield and so the baby feeds through this plastic shield um, and just makes, keeps them off your breast tissue for a little while while your breast tissue heals. So as soon as you can get rid of this, that will encourage you to get rid of that nipple shield. So making sure you come in and talk to people if you've got sore nipples and getting the help that you need. So there are massive, massive benefits to breastfeeding. We know that now. Um, so lots of, lots of benefits to the baby for immune, for their gut, for, um, for it being free, <laughs> for um, bonding between mum and baby. It's rewarding. You're not having to get up and organising bottles in the night. Um, there are antibodies that are passed down from your mum and this actually goes down through generations. So we're really, really encouraging women to give breastfeeding a go and that these days you will get the support that you need um, to be able to do it and to stick to it. Um, there's a couple of other uh, little um, breastfeeding DVDs and uh, information that we want to share with you. And so this is an amazing breastfeeding DVD. You can find this on YouTube um, if you haven't got a DVD player but you will get access to this. This is a New Zealand DVD, uh, it shows women breastfeeding so you can actually see what it looks like to see a baby latching on well um, and to see how to do it properly. So make sure you go onto YouTube, find this um, DVD and watch it. It's really good learning. Um, another thing about breastfeeding that sometimes people think about is that you can use it as a contraceptive. Um, we really recommend that if you want to use it as a contraceptive that you do this course. There is a cost to it but they teach you how to do it properly rather than just relying on the fact that you're breastfeeding. A lot of people, a lot of women when they're breastfeeding still get pregnant. So you really need to know what you're doing um, with that. So looking up Natural Fertility New Zealand and exploring that more if you're interested in that. There are also lots of amazing breastfeeding support groups. There's one in particular called the La Leche League. Um, we have handouts and information and they actually do meet in Whangarei. So um, there's lots of support and information that you can get through them. Okay, let's wrap it up. Okay, okay. well we hope you've enjoyed um, watching this series of childbirth education. Um, if you've got any questions, get in touch with your midwife or with us and you can always go back and review things as well. Um, yes, <laughs> we've really enjoyed it, this getting this opportunity to just connect with people online. If you can't come along to our actual classes, then this is just a different way for you to still get the information um, about having a baby. We hope that it's been fun, we hope that it's been interesting, um, and yeah, we really look forward to um, hearing from you if you do have any questions, like Natasha said. As you're watching the videos, maybe just write down any questions that you've got um, at, at the time, because you won't remember them later. <laughs> um, so yeah, please stay in touch with us if you've got any more questions, and yeah, we just really hope you found it valuable, and we've enjoyed doing this for you. 